Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. In the previous segment, if you missed it, I talked about Mac Jones and his market value right now circulating around the NFL and what people think about that and my thoughts on that as well. But if you're just joining me now, you're just in time to tune into the discussion around the Steelers wide receiver potentially up for a trade. There's been a lot of rumors and talks swirling up right now around the Steelers wide receivers, that being Deontay Johnson. He is the most experienced receiver in the Steelers locker room. And just coming off of last year, he had a decent season, but there was a lot of off the field, on the sidelines, interactions, um, rumors that Deontay might not be happy with the situation, his target share. The, the whole offense as a whole last year was a mess. Nobody doesn't know that, you know, with the offensive coordinator, the quarterback carousel that they had after Kenny Pickett got hurt, bringing in Mason Rudolph, Mitchell Trubisky. It was all a mess, and you could kind of see why Deontay Johnson would be angry. But now, it's been a couple of seasons now that people can get angry on the sidelines, but you have to back it up with production, unquestionable production, for people to really back you and support you when you're upset. And that's not really been the case for Deontay Johnson. He has been coming out of decent seasons. He had one season where he didn't score a single touchdown. That's not all on him, but it is a fact. It's a stat out there. Um, an unbelievable stat for a lot of people. You know, you're thinking, how could a wide receiver not score one touchdown the whole season? And, you know, he's also on an, on an expiring deal. The Steelers actually extended him two years ago to this date, now to this year, to a two-year, $36 million contract, 27 of that million dollars being guaranteed, and he's entering the final year of that minimal extension now, and, you know, he's not pushing 30, but he is getting a little bit up there. I think he's 28, 29 in just off the top of my head, and... You know, you have George Pickens already, and after that you have Allen Robinson, Calvin Austin, two receivers that haven't really made an impact with the Steelers. George Pickens is obviously trending towards that number one spot now, even though Deontay's been there a little longer. And just rumors around the trading box suggest that he could be unhappy up to this point with his share and things like that. And on top of that, the Steelers actually had a good amount of formal meetings with some top receivers in the NFL draft. Nothing unusual, really, because they always have meetings, former, formal or informal, with a bunch of wide receivers, at least I, that I've noticed following the team in the past 10 so years, 10 plus years. They've always had these meetings just with receivers because you only get a good amount of formal meetings at the Combine. And why wouldn't you want to meet with some of these top guys in case the situation arises that, you know, you're in need of them, maybe not now, but down the line, if they are on an expiring rookie deal and it looks like they're not going to sign for anybody, they could think back to that meeting they had with the Steelers. The Steelers could think back to that meeting they had with that player and think, oh, he was a great guy. He had a great interview um, back in the Combine three, four years ago. Why don't we take a stab at him and see if he would want to sign here? That's, I think, where their mindset kind of goes. They met specifically with receivers like Rome Odunze and Keon Coleman, two guys that are rumored to go in the first round. So that's eye-catching in and in itself. But, you know, from my point of view, I don't really see too much into that. Um, it's just protocol. You're not going to meet with just the positions that you need because there's not enough guys that you value high enough to fill up all those formal meeting slots that you have. So, you know, why not meet with a top running back, a top wide receiver? Uh, they didn't meet with a lot of or any top quarterbacks from, from what I saw. So that was interesting because obviously the whole quarterback issue. But going back to Deontay, that's already eye-catching. They're meeting with receivers. Then reports come out like the one from Tony Pauline that or where he said, while it's not fair to say Johnson is on the trading block, several people tell me the Steelers are open to moving the receiver if the if they receive fair compensation. 
And of course, like a lot of athletes now, basically everybody um, goes on social media, reacts to it, says a very quick sentiment. He says it is what it is with the shrug emoji. And, you know, I think that tweet was later deleted. And, you know, it got a reaction out of Johnson. He let people know how he felt. And as soon as the reports come out and they start getting traction, you got some fans that jump on that report and also, you know, heavily agree with it. There are some fans that don't think Deontay is an unquestionable, unmovable wide receiver, star player that, you know, can't be looked at in a trade. Um, Just off of the facts of the stats, the success that he's had, you know, he hasn't really made that big jump in his career. Um, The best season that he's had really, I think, was with Big Ben his last couple seasons or just one or two years that when Juju was still here. But other than that, he hasn't really made that great jump. He's got a decent skill set. He's a good route runner, a uh, decent deep ball threat, but it, you don't see the kind of qualities that just pop out like a George Pickens. You know, George Pickens is on social media, on the news, all these outlets where he makes a crazy catch. He's got the size, the speed. Uh, he does everything that you would want a wide receiver one to do. And I think that piling on with, you know, once Kenny Pickett got drafted, there was immediately all these things about oh can he pick it to pickens it's pick it to pickens it's going to be this great connection for however many years down the line almost people forgetting that deontay johnson has been there and he's been the number one guy for this long and then george pickens comes in and people just put him as the number one guy and maybe deontay felt a certain way about that maybe not um i wouldn't know that personally but you know he obviously sees that and he's going to have a reaction to it, positive or negatively. And that all kind of adds into this trade rumor where he's happy with Kenny Pickett. He's not happy with Kenny Pickett, with the team. Um, his attitude's been thrown into question as well at some points. Just off the top of my mind, the Bengals game at Cincinnati this year, it was a, a fumble play. Jalen Warren fumbled and... Deontay Johnson was blocking, and Warren fumbled almost in his eyesight, in his path where he was blocking, and he sort of just like looked at it and didn't jump on it. The Bengals recovered it. They had a pretty much a free recovery to it because Deontay didn't jump on it or try to tackle them until the play developed a little longer, and then he kind of you know snapped back into it and started running after them. They tackled him in the end, but... That moment right there showed a lot of people or gave people reason to think that, you know, this guy isn't about the team really at all. He's, one, he's airing his frustrations with the lack of targets and catches that he might not get. But then he's also showing this sort of attitude and people just immediately pile on to him about his attitude, his character. He had to answer some questions about it afterwards. Um, But that is another reason why people aren't shy about airing their frustrations with him, building on to these reports a lot more for the Steelers trading or potentially wanting to trade um, Deontay Johnson. And just thinking about it, all the facts that I just mentioned and the situation with his contract, the reports, it you sit back and you think, you know, what can you get in return really? Are the Steelers in a position to trade away a reliable number two receiver that's been there for a good amount. He knows the organization. The organization knows what they're going to get from him. Are they in a position to, or in a position of luxury to trade him away and maybe get something as equal as him back? I would probably say no because they got other holes to fill. I'm not going to say the quarterback because that's obvious. O-line, they just released their center. They need a new offensive tackle to slide Broderick Jones, their first-round pick last year, back to his natural position in left tackle. So they're going to be looking at tackles, centers. They need a corner opposite of Joey Porter Jr., which they hit on last year. That was a great pick, but now they need somebody on the other side to complement him. They haven't had a great inside linebacker since Ryan Shazier tragically got hurt. 
So that's another spot. Last year, virtually all of their inside linebackers got hurt, and that cost them in the playoffs and down the regular season. And then you could start looking at defensive line as well. Cam Hayward's getting older. Yeah, you drafted Keanu Benton. I'm a big fan of Keanu Benton, but he you're going to need more to replenish the time and the just the skill set that Cam Hayward gives you when he decides to hang it up. And that's coming sooner rather than later. As well as just thinking about the safety position, someone opposite of Minka Fitzpatrick. They had DeMonte KZ in there, Keanu Neal in there at times. But that was just a revolving position. Had players in and out of it. Players hurt, forcing them to be in and out of the lineup. Minka Fitzpatrick got hurt a good amount last season. So that's another position where they could definitely build on. I don't think they could now look at wide receiver and willingly get rid of a decent one, a good one, and then, you know, figure out the rest of the positions afterwards. Uh, I don't think that would be smart for them to do. I think Omar Khan would be, or is smarter than that to to do that. Trading for for anything less than a second or a third, I think would be, would be throwing that opportunity away. But that's just the reports, what's kind of gained traction as of late. And, you know, there's no guarantee if you get a second-round pick, a third-round pick, and if you spend that on a wide receiver, there's no guarantee he's going to be an A1 wide receiver 2 kind of player that could immediately contribute. Every player is different coming into the NFL, and you can hope and think you know, and project that he's going to be good right away, but you truly never know until they produce it. George Pickens was obviously had freakish ability, freakish size, speed, and everything. He adjusted a lot quicker than most receivers I have seen do. So there's all that as well as something else that I found interesting just about this whole Deontay Johnson situation with trades and wanting some fans wanting him out. It didn't help at the end of last year when Johnson almost aired what quarterback he prefer what quarterback he preferred in that little battle that they had with Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett. Once Kenny Pickett got hurt, you know Mitchell came in and it wasn't a success at all. So they had to move on from Mitchell Trubisky and start Mason Rudolph and. Mason Rudolph, I understand, has been with Deontay Johnson a long time. They've been there virtually the same amount of time with the Steelers. And he basically said in an interview after the Bills game, um, he said, I kind of had high hopes for him to do what he's doing. He came in and became the starter. So hopefully he gets the job next year, do what he got to do. Other than that, he did a great job, man. Talking about Rudolph after that Bills game. And, you know, um, you're sort of nitpicking right now, potentially reading too far into those quotes, but some people, and I could see where where they're coming from, might look at that and think, you know, he obviously prefers Mason Rudolph over Kenny Pickett. They had some pretty explosive games with Mason Rudolph. I'll give him that. But at the same time, you can't say that um, if you're Deontay Johnson. I get it that Mason did great. You want to support Mason. Everyone should support Mason because he was the third string, took advantage of his opportunity, and ran with it, had good success to make the playoffs. But he said it so nonchalantly and very confident, almost too favoring Mason Rudolph a bit too much. I've never seen him say something too positively about Kenny in comparison to the other quarterbacks. Yeah, he supported Kenny, but he's not... um, almost chosen him over the other quarterbacks um, as much as he has in this quote. So just that just adds more fuel to the fire. And it brings us to this point where, you know, the Steelers might want to listen to offers for Johnson. There's nothing wrong with that. But you're going to have to wait and see how he responds to that, how the Steelers act in free agency. There's a good amount of wide receiver free agents out there that I'm going to get into later in this show. Do the Steelers take a peek at that? And just through the draft as well, the Steelers love drafting wide receivers. It's been a trend in the last drafts for a while now. It usually happens in that second round. But I just think this year it's a little bit different because you have more holes around the team than you expected than a lot of team or than a lot of fans might really know of. 
And I think you have to address those first before you can begin any sort of talks, entertain any sort of offers around Deontay Johnson and wanting to get rid of him. I think it's best to ride out this last year with him, and then if he doesn't produce and if it's still looking the same on offense, even with Arthur Smith there, I think then you kind of know where you are as a team. You're undoubtedly going to get better through the draft this year and through free agency. I think you can just wait it out one more year, not take too much of a gamble and just let him walk, or potentially get towards the end of the season and then trade him. We'll see where that goes. I'm going to leave that conversation there. It's a lot of ifs, maybes, and a lot of just opinions up to this point because it's just been a report that's been thrown out there, but it's getting a lot of traction, mostly with Steelers fans because some of them aren't shy about sharing their frustrations with with anybody on the team. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave that segment there. I'm going to send it to a quick break. And on the other side of that break, I'm going to bring you more on the NFL Combine, my winners and my losers, as well as the biggest story on which wide receivers I believe are the best available out there on the market that teams can take a stab at as we get closer and closer to the start of the new league year. Don't go anywhere. More on those stories on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network.